programme. Eight, uh, the Honourable Member for Battle River Crawford. Thank, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. It is an, an honour to be able to join into debate once again in this House. And uh, if I could, um, Madam Speaker, this uh, by, by what I'm hearing in the media and the rumours around Ottawa, we very well may be facing an election in, uh, in, in the coming months. So, uh, And as this may be my last speech prior to that election, uh, I, I, I wanted to share just a couple of quick quick uh, brief words of thanks uh, to the constituents of Battle River Crowfoot for the honour that it has been over the last uh, uh, year and a half or so to be your voice in Canada's Parliament and certainly as we have faced uh, an unprecedented time on so many fronts uh, and and the need for, for collaboration the need to hold the government to a p account as a member of the opposition it has been a true honour and I look forward to uh, uh, life getting back to normal. I know in Alberta the uh, the open for summer plan has uh, uh, the vast majority of of COVID restrictions being lifted on July 1st, and I know that is is an exciting uh, prospect for Albertans as we look forward to getting back to. To normal and certainly madam speaker as uh, i i will even though parliament is scheduled to rise in a few days i look forward to continuing to fight in every way possible for the good people of east central alberta in battle river crowfoot that i have the the honor and privilege of being able to serve Madam Speaker, I am uh, here, here rising again on, on debate uh, on the Liberals' budget, an omnibus budget bill, uh, Bill C-30, that uh, I would point out is something that the Liberals promised to never do. Now, when a Liberal uh, parliamentary secretary was asked the, that very question uh, on Friday, he said, well, this is different because it's a budget bill. And uh, I would simply point out, as I've asked a number of questions on, and, and quite frankly, have not received um, m much response. This bill covers a wide swath of of, of things. Yes, that are that were promised in in the much delayed um, uh, budget that we saw introduced uh, here a number of months ago. But it also includes some other aspects, uh, including an amendment to the Elections Act, uh, change to the gas tax fund, and a few other other things that I I will be diving into more detail on. But uh, I would like to uh, uh, address one of the, the concerns that I'm increasing, increasingly hearing from constituents, um, and that is the attitude to which uh, this current Liberal government is approaching uh, the legislative agenda, approaching uh, their, 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 their way to govern the country. And uh, I, uh, I had a constituent that gave me a very apt description, Madam Speaker, that I'd like to share with you uh, about the, the, the rhetoric that's been coming out of the Liberal benches as of late. And it is simply this. It's, uh, the, the, the government is, is quick to blame the opposition for all of their failures, um, which uh, you know, I think we've been very effective at articulating how absurd that is. Um, and had it not been for the opposition, I would suggest that Canada would be in a much worse spot when it comes to whether it's COVID relief programs programs, you know, the third time's the charm in terms of, of, of some of the, um, the legislation that's had to been, that's had to be repaired several times. Uh, the, the, the fact that, that it's the opposition that is, is exposing many of the, the, uh, the areas of mismanagement and, and, and uh, uh, very, very troubling uh, tr trends related to uh, the approach that uh, uh, the Liberals have, have taken to uh, government accountability and ethics. Uh, but but Madam Speaker, the, these last couple of weeks in particular, uh, I, the, the government house leader and, and other liberal members, uh, the prime minister in his press conferences, of course, he would never say that in the House of Commons because he'd be held to account on it, but uh, have said, well, it's, it's, it's the conservatives that are, that are being obstructionist, that it's somehow of the opposition's fault that the government can't get anything accomplished. Well, Madam Speaker, uh, a constituent shared with me an analogy that I would share with you, and it's simply this. That's a little bit like a student, after having received a syllabus for the school year, comes upon the night before the, the, the deadline for a major assignment at the end of the course, and all of a sudden realizes that they had a lot of work to do, but did very little or nothing. And now they have a choice. 
They can either admit their failures or they can um, uh, blame and, and pivot and f make excuses. And Madam Speaker, certainly we see the government has chosen to do the latter when they would rather blame conservatives for uh, whole for for obstruction than acknowledging that they're the ones in charge and have utterly failed in their legislative management and madam speaker if this is an indication of how they've managed government over the last six years there is no wonder why our country is facing some of the major challenges they are madam speaker this is a large bill Bill C-30 is, is, uh, addresses many aspects of, of, of uh, 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 COVID response programs, changes to, to, to other aspects of the functioning of government. And, and I'm, I'm going to get into those, those specific things, but I do want to touch on um, a couple of things uh, that, uh, that, that haven't ha got a lot of airtime, so to speak. And one of which is that there is a proposed amendment to the Elections Act. Now, uh, part of the Elections Act uh, was that, that talks about misleading statements during an election and uh, was struck down by a court ruling. So the government has, has inserted, uh, somewhat innocuously in this bill, uh, a, a amendment to the Elections Act that would include the word knowingly mislead during an election. Now, I would suggest, Madam Speaker, that uh, uh, the, the government's, uh, 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 the, the, the knowingly mislead part, there's a lot of discussion that should be had around that, especially when we see the failures of the current government government to uphold elections commitments pivoting away from from promises made the the so certainly the the astounding level of of, of 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 mistrust that is being faced across the the uh, across political discourse these days and madam speaker i find it troubling that that hasn't been debated uh, uh, extensively in this bill and uh, it it calls into question some of the the purposes associated with why that would be inserted into the back of a budget implementation act the second thing and this is uh, something that is typically liberal i would suggest and it is that th in the budget implementation act the government plans to rename the gas tax fund now, this is the liberal agenda at its best. They take something, rename it, shine it up a little bit, a little bit of spit and polish, and then they would suggest that they have, have, uh, have done Canadians a great service by, by this new program, a fancy new name, and that appears to be what they have done with the gas tax fund, which will be going forward called the Canada Community Building Fund. And certainly, uh, the the their new name certainly has a has a ring to it that most Canadians would say, "Hey, that's a great idea." And and grant applications and and funds going to municipalities. But Madam Speaker, I believe it's very very important to highlight that simply changing the name of something and some of the challenges associated with governmental accountability and the increased costs and uh, it 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 is uh, uh, quite something to simply rename. Uh, a program. And then what I expect is to come is that during what will be likely a flurry of election spending announcements uh, promoted by the infrastructure of government, as we saw prior to the 2019 election, and uh, of which we're already seeing how, how, how cabinet ministers are, 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 are jet setting across the country to try and, and, and use the tools that they have at their disposal to, 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 uh, make make a myriad of promises prior to the election. Now, all of a sudden, we're going to see uh, a whole bunch of, of of promises related to this new fund. They'll call it now. They probably won't call it a new fund, but under a new name, and uh, will certainly claim credit for the work, even though it's it's been uh, it certainly wasn't the Liberals that brought forward that fund and how it has benefited many many municipalities, including some in Battle River Crowfoot. So I'm glad to have the, had the opportunity to put that on the record so that Canadians know that simply renaming something does not give a, the government of the day credit. You know, Madam Speaker, it is, uh, uh, I see that my time is, is, is coming to a close. You know, there's, there's extensions to, the, uh, uh, to, to many aspects of COVID programming, some concerns 
related to to not being able to address some of the folks that had fallen through the cracks. There's there's further uh, changes to uh, uh, the the uh, to to health transfers, some of which is very needed. I would suggest that that the, the dollar is a little bit too late when it comes to vaccinations, which speaks to the liberal strategy. You know, if we had been on time with vaccines, we wouldn't have had a third wave. This was Justin Trudeau. Uh, my apologies, Madam Speaker, the Prime Minister's third wave when it comes to the delays that we face. But Madam Speaker, as we've come to, I believe, the end of, of my speech, I would simply say this. Parliament, is, as the, the institution that represents, the only institution that represents Canadians, to hear that the government is trying to circumvent at every cost the, the, the need for this place to carefully and 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 uh, uh, thoughtfully debate and discuss legislation, including something as significant as this this bill before us, Bill C thirty. It is very troubling to hear that they would try to circumvent, to dismiss the need for what is is uh, should be of absolute importance to every single one of us. So, Madam Speaker, thank you very much for the opportunity. To look forward to questions. Questions et commentaires, uh, l'honorable député de Beauport Limoilou. The Honourable Member for Beauport Limoilou. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Like my colleague, I have taken the time to closely look over the budget, read and analyze it. And when I take notes, I use red ink when there's intrusion into Quebec and interference into Quebec and provincial jurisdiction. And there was a lot of red ink in my notes. I'd like to hear from my colleague on that aspect of the budget. The issue of federal intrusion into provincial jurisdiction. For Battle River Crowfoot. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And uh, you know, I think that this is is has become standard practice for 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 successive Liberal governments is to ensure whether it's through direct legislative means like we see in this, but also the whole myriad of other other regulatory or 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 political mechanisms that would. Uh, uh, blur the lines between the different levels of government. Madam Speaker, our federation works because there needs to be respect between different levels of government. And unfortunately, we have seen a significant erosion of that over the last six years, one that has led to, to a, a, a increased level of alienation in various regions of the country, certainly that is being felt in Western Canada. And a lot of that you point back to uh, a, a liberal government that refuses to, to, to stay within the lines uh, the, of 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 what our country was intended to be, how the Federation was intended to operate. And it is incredibly troubling that time and time again, we see that there is this intrusion into uh, provincial jurisdiction by the federal government. The Ottawa knows best mentality. Now that may make for great, great uh, uh, press conferences, great, uh, great spending announcements, but Madam Speaker, that is not how leadership works. Leadership needs to be working with provincial partners. And have to, uh, have to give uh, time for uh, other questions. The Honourable Mem Member for Kingston and the Islands. I'd just like to ask the member to expand on his previous comment where he said that the federal government is uh, going into jurisdiction uh, um, that's provincial territory. The only thing that I can think of offhand would be um, the fight over uh, pricing pollution. Uh, which the Supreme Court said was within the federal government's jurisdiction. So can the member uh, um, elaborate on uh, where the federal government seems to be uh, uh, going into territory that it shouldn't be? The Honourable Member for Battle River Crowfoot. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And to uh, uh, the, uh, that member emphasizes the problem. He time and time again refuses to acknowledge that there are regions of the country that demand uh, respect in our federation. And this Liberal government has refused to do so, even to the point where in various legislation, I. I think about Bill Bill C-48, Bill C-69, even the, the debate around carbon pricing. Just because the federal government has the ability to Im impose their will on provinces, the question should be asked is whether or not they should. And the problem is we have a liberal government that is currently in charge that refuses to respect anyone who disagrees with any aspect of the way that they would approach uh, politics. The, the legislation that they would the honorable... The Honourable Member for Vancouver East. 
Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker, and I thank the member for his comments. Now, we know that uh, with Bill C-30, with this budget, during the pandemic, inequalities have increased. The ultra-rich are becoming richer than ever, and those who need help are still struggling to get by. And yet, we don't see a wealth tax. We do not see a pandemic uh, profiteering tax. Uh, and in fact, the government has opted to do more consultation in tackling the problem of tax havens. Does the member think that this is the right approach or does he think the NDP's proposal in bringing forward a wealth tax and actually bringing forward a profiteering tax during this time is the right way to go? The Honourable Member for Battle River Crowfoot. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And I think that, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the member asks a question that strikes at the heart of, of, of the, the, the way that the Liberals have pulled the wool over the eyes of Canadians. They will, they're, they're trying to outflank the NDP on the left regarding policy measures. But when it comes to actual implementation, to dealing with many of the things that they promised to deal with, they end up uh, 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 simply saying that, well, we'll consult on that going forward or back off right uh, uh, back away from their their commitments entirely and madam speaker i think that that uh, uh, is is further a troubling trend that we see that there is a government that is not being honest with canadians and i would simply say this a lot of the covid programming we have seen increasingly that it is the elites that are benefiting from the billions of dollars that was meant to reason